What is up, YouTube? James Beck here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2018 Back to Big Battles. Today, we are using the Top Aleta Excelgore team that I used to get top four at the Roanoke Regional Championship with Excelgore, Top Aleta, Charizard Y, Landers Variant, Mimikyu, and Snorlax. So, let's get started. Now, it's been a really fun team, especially from playing a bit. And yeah, I tried to play a bit off camera, but. Like, I ended up going on a losing streak, and then what happened was I ended up DCing twice in, like, team previews. I do apologize if that was you. I happened to face while uh, DCing but in team previews, so if you were looking forward to playing me. But then I got, like, softlock, so I couldn't actually find games. I had to reset my rating. And then I tried to ladder back a little bit because I wanted to, uh, you know, at least, you know, see if we can find at least uh, maybe some higher rated opponents. But then <laughs> I just kept facing Blissey. I kept facing Minimize Blissey and that was a pain. I faced four Blisseys somehow. I faced four Blisseys just to stay. Just to stay. I don't know what's going on here. But uh, we got our first opponent. We're Triple Psychic. Cresselia, Metagross, Nia Illegal, Incineroar, Landis Varian, and Tapu Lele. Now this is actually a really scary team because of the fact that... This could be really scary. Um, I actually really like the Mimilax mode more here than I actually like. Yeah, I actually like the Mimilax mode a lot more. The reason I like the Mimilax mode a lot more here in this battle, I think, is because of the fact that Cresselia is going to be a difficult po Pokemon to handle. Now, Illegal is a little bit difficult for uh, the Charizard, Landers, Tapu Lele, Excelgore mode. So I think I do want to go to Mimilax mode. I feel like it's a safer lead here. Put Charizard and Landris in the back. I think this is my optimal lead here. So we're finally going to get to bring the uh, Mimikyu Snorlax mode, which I'm really happy about because I don't really bring Mimikyu Snorlax as much with this team. I found like I just brought the standard four usually and only brought uh, Mimikyu Snorlax against hard, like very specific matchups. Like I think the only time I actually brought it during the regional was like against probably two times, like two sets of the entire regional. It was like, well, three sets actually. Um, two were hard. Two were one was hard trick room, the other one was uh, golf mob rain, and then the other one I brought it in a game three set against the Metagross standard team because I was predicting my opponent to not prepare for the Mimilax mode. But we're gonna see the Cresselia plus the Incineroar lead, which I am completely okay with. I am realistically completely okay with because of the fact that hmm. Incineroars don't usually carry Snatch anymore, so I'm not really too worried about Snatch Incineroar. They usually tend to run U-turn, especially on this team, I could definitely see U-turn. The question is, what do I want to go for? I could go for a temp trick room, but, you know, Cresselia could reverse trick room. The question is, does this Cresselia carry trick room? Because, realistically, only Incineroar can really take advantage of trick room, so I'm kind of not assuming trick room. Maybe it's like a Calm Mind variant, but I'm not really expecting much of trick room here. So, I think I'm just going to protect and attempt to set up trick room. I don't want to take the fake out, even though I don't think you should fake out right away. I think if anything, you should knock off, but just to be safe, right? And sorry, knock off going to come out, does target down the Mimikyu slot, so good play for my opponent. And it looks like it is going to be the uh, Trick Room coming out from my opponent's Cresselia. So yeah, this Cresselia does reveal to have Trick Room, which I don't really mind too much because of the fact that, you know, I can always Z Destiny Bond here and just Belly Drum up, and then it's going to be a mind game between my Mimikyu and the Cresselia, so I don't really mind that too much. As I will go for the Z Destiny Bond and a Belly Drum. Yeah, it's a pretty safe play. The only thing is, if again, if Incineroar does have Snatch, but Incineroars really just don't carry Snatch, especially since I feel like this team would probably benefit more from U Turn. I will see what comes out here. No Snatch does come out. I will get my Ghost CMZ guaranteed. And yeah, we'll see what my opponent decides to do after. We'll get the Ghost Team up. I wonder what the back two is. My opponent can't bring the three combinations of Nile Legal, Tapalay, and Metagross, which are our Pokemon that I'm scared of. So that's a huge plus. We're going to see the Icy Wind come out, which is an interesting play. So Icy Wind, and then I'm guessing Knock Off into my Snorlax here. That's what I would imagine. Yep, Knock Off into my sn which was probably targeting my Snorlax. Let's go into Mimikyu. And I will go for the Belly Drum right here. So. Got a plus six Snorlax, which is pretty good. I can go for a return into Cresselia, although I don't know if return knocks out Cresselia. I don't really have to target down the Incineroar slot, at least not yet, I think. Although maybe it's in my best interest to target down the Incineroar slot, but I think just going for the Trick Room 
and a maybe it is better to return the Incineroar, but it's Trickum Cresselius. I'm not really too worried. It does have Icy Wind, but yeah, it just doesn't do much. I think I am actually going to return to Cresselia because I can threaten the Incineroar later, and if we decide to target my Snorlax and reverse Trickum, if Return knocks out to Cresselia, I'm able to get Trickum back up. I don't really mind. We're going to see the Ally Switch, which I don't think I mind that play at all for me because of the fact that I am... If you target down my Mimikyu, you're going down. Yeah. Uh, I don't get the Ally Switch play there if you're going to target down my Mimikyu anyway. Because that Destiny Bond's still in effect, Incineroar is going to go down, and now I get a return into Cresselia. I don't know if this knocks out, it depends on the investment, but I mean, that's a big return, and I just got a massive amount of damage onto that Cresselia. Actually, barely misses the knockout. Procs a berry, but I think I'm okay with that trade. I mean, I don't see a reason why I should be disappointed about that trade. I will be able to get my Charizard next to my Landris, and we're going to have a pretty fun time. Let's see what my opponent's gonna bring out. Nilego, I'm not really too worried about. Top of the leg is actually gonna be revealed here. So, I wonder if it's like a Psychium Z set. I mean, I could just overheat the top of the Lele. Cause I don't think you're gonna ally switch here. I wonder if you're more worried about my Charizard though. I mean, I do live Shadow Psyche, which is an important thing to note. With Snorlax, you would have to double target it, and I don't think Icy Wind would be strong enough to pick up the knockout. But I think I'm actually just going to Heat Wave, and I think Recycle here. I get to confirm what kind of Lele this item this is. And I don't want to Overheat because of the fact that I feel like if I go for Overheat, and there is an Ally Switch, I, well, even I guess if that was the case, then I'd be able to get the Return off anyway. So no matter what, I guess there isn't really too much of a loss, but I do want to keep Snorlax around for as long as possible. And if Lele protects, that's a free recycle for me, which I don't see, uh, you know, a big problem there. As we will go for the Heat Wave, I'm guessing that means an Icy Wind is coming out. I do miss a Crest, which is unfortunate, because I could have got another one, and it would have been able to pick up the Knockout. As Icy Wind will come out into the Snorlax. But with that recycle, it's absolutely huge, because if you go for Shadow Psyche, you're not knocking out my Snorlax. Uh, the question, I guess, is, is Cresselia has Helping Hand? We've seen Icy Wind, Trick Room, Ally Switch, so it could be Helping Hand, which, you know, is a little bit of concern. I think I do, should, I should scout that for, for that, I think. I think I should scout that out, but you could go for Helping Hand Psychic, realistically, in a Charizard. We are going to see the Helping Hand come out, and I'm guessing this is in my Snorlax. Although, you could realistically target on Charizard, too. This is going to be questionable. But if you're going for the Z-move, I feel like you're targeting out my Snorlax. Okay. So if you're targeting my Snorlax, I don't feel like that's a problem for me because of the fact that... Yeah, if you want to target out my Snorlax the following turn... Yeah, I, f I think that's fine. I realistically think that's fine. Yeah, it is my Snorlax, so perfect. I do call that right, so I'm going to be taking minimal damage. I waste my opponent's Z-move. Uh, that still does a good amount of damage. That really still does a good amount of damage, as we will go for the Heat Wave here. It does connect with both, and actually, I think the Heat Wave miss on Cresselia might be a blessing, because now I could get a double knockout onto that uh, top of Lele slot if necessary. So I'll go for the Heat Wave here, and a return into the top of Lele, because again, Cresselia's not really threatening much. It can go for Icy Winds and stuff, but I think it's fine. Um, I'll go for the Heat Wave and Return. I think Helping and Psychic is going to go out, and I think it's going to target on Charizard this time. I would imagine it targets on Charizard this time. Psychic going to come out into... No, it targets on my Snorlax. So, Snorlax, do you survive this? Uh, it actually does. That's actually pretty big. Uh, with my Snorlax surviving, that's not what I expected, but I was going to be expecting a double knockout or maybe Charizard going down there. I missed a Cresselli with Heat Wave, but as long as I hit one, Snorlax will finish up the other. So I'm not really too concerned about that. So the top of the ladder will go down. We will get a return off into the Cresselia. So Cresselia goes down, which is great. And now it's now a 3v1 situation. Nihiligo can't beat my Snorlax. Metagross is probably the Pokemon in the back. Oh, it's actually the Nihiligo. So, yeah, I guess that explains why my opponent was going so aggressive against my Snorlax. But uh, that works out for me because now I can just fire off a Solar Beam right here. And a return. 
I do have Landis in the back, so I'm still not too worried. As the match is going to be forfeit, my opponent realizing. I don't even think a crit sludge bomb from like a life form Nihiligo would knock out. I think it would have to be a Z move Nihiligo. And we already saw the top of Lei use the Z move, so it really couldn't do much. And yeah, that shows how much Snorlax was just able to put in a ton of work. And yeah, I think like the big mistake my opponent made was going for the ally switch that one turn because you got nothing out of that turn, basically. I feel like if my opponent actually went for like. Um, an Icy Wind, for instance. You saw that my Snorlax lived on 4 HP. That could have actually been, uh, big, big, um, big damage in order for that later part of the game. Because I'd be forced to bring in Landers. And then it would come down to some mind games. One, does the Nile have HP Ice? If it doesn't, I think I win with my Landers. But if it does have HP Ice, helping hand HP Ice could go. But, of course, it could be, like, a mind game of, am I Scarf Landers, for instance? Do I go for Earthquake there? Or if you're, like, Sash, Nile Ego, it... Well, you just risk going for the power gem and maybe an icy wind, for instance. I mean, there are multiple plays my opponent could have uh, went for there. But luckily, Snorlax just being able to hang on from the helping hand. So I get, and I think the big turn there was, one, the random ally switch as I Destiny Bond. Z Destiny Bond, you targeted down my Mimikyu. You lose your Incineroar, and I'm able to get the return to Cresselia. And another big turn was the protect on the Shattered Psyche from the top of light. Because keeping Snorlax around was pretty useful for that situation and yeah and just being able to live to helping on psychic afterward was just like incredible with snorlax snorlax able to showcase it's a really nice bulk here as it's taking quite a while to find our second game so i think i'm just gonna cut it here till we find the second game we'll be right back with the second game of today's episode as we got maverick from the united states florida 15 18 rating as our next opponent with the team of Cresselia, Porygon 2, Venusaur, Swampert, Incineroar, and S Snorlax. So, I'm actually wondering if it's a Torrent. I want, I mean, not Torrent Swampert. If it's a regular Swampert, because we've seen regular Swampert back in VGC 2015. We saw it a lot with like Expert Belt and just Wide Guard support. So, I'm actually really curious. Uh, I'm guessing this is Mega Venusaur because of the fact that there is no like Charizard, so I can't really. You know benefit from chlorophyll i think this is another game i would really like just to bring the mimikyu snorlax mode over the excelgore lele although excelgore lele does i mean lele does really well against the venusaur for instance it doesn't really do well against my uh, opponent's other pokemon so i do like mimikyu because taunt really just shuts down the snorlax cresselia and these uh porygon too and nothing on my opponent's team really hits the mimikyu for a lot of damage so i think that is my play here and snorlax is pretty good in this matchup as well I think for a Pokemon in the back, I like Charizard. Or do I like Charizard? I definitely like Landers here because I do need it for the Incineroar. It's useful. The question is, do I want to bring Charizard or maybe Lele for the Venusaur? Because I could see myself bring Lele, but... You know, I think Snorlax just beats the Venusaur anyway, so I don't feel like it's too big of a concern. I think I'm going to bring Charizard just because the strong spread damage just might help overall with, like, helping breaking through the Snorlax, for instance. So let's see how this is going to go for our second battle of today's episode. It's going to be an interesting one, that is for sure. We got some pretty defensive, I think, synergy instead of offense, which is, you know, quite nice to see. We're going to see the Swamper Cresselia lead. Which is interesting. Now, Swampert does have access to Roar, if I remember right. So, I think, you know, just taunt the Swampert just in case. I don't know if it's like Rain Dance. Oh, man. A Rain Dance strategy could actually be a little bit scary right here. But I will taunt the Swampert, and I think I will attempt to Belly Drum up. Scald Burn could be annoying, but otherwise, I don't really see much my opponent can do here. That's really, really, like, threatening to my Snorlax right here. So, I will taunt the Swampert in case it does, you know, have that roar option if it is that kind of Swampert, but it's Mega Swampert. Okay. So, I wonder if this is actually Rain Dance Cresselia or if this Swampert carries Rain Dance. Huh. Probably the Cresselia would carry Rain Dance. We will taunt the Swampert. As it goes for Earthquake. Okay. Hmm. So Snorlax is going to take some damage, that's not what I expected. And... 
and uh, Belly Drum does come out. And it looks like my opponent actually expected the Trick Room and is going with Trick Room with the Cresselia, which is actually really nice for me because I didn't go for Trick Room. So my opponent a little bit overextending right there. And now I'm just going to be able to taunt the Cresselia the following turn. Unless it's like a Mental Herb or if it's actually like a Psychium Z set, I'll just be able to taunt the Cresselia. And I can fire off a return into Swampert. So my opponent overextended there thinking I'd probably go for Trick Room. Which you know. To be fair, if I knew if it was Mega Swampert, I'd probably go for Trick Room. But since, you know, the Roar, I didn't think it was Mega Swampert, the Roar was definitely a potential option. I didn't want to go for it. So, go for the return right there is Ally Switch. Oh. So, am I just taunting the Swampert again? I will go for a return into the Cresselia, which, you know, does a good amount of damage. Earthquake going to come out once again. Okay. So... Yeah, that does a good amount as I will taunt again it fails um guess I'll just go landers here on the earthquake potential and I think I'll just return the Did I just return the swampert at this point I mean it can't protect I might as well just return the swampert I could return to Cresselia if I really want to, but since Swampert can't protect and there's no Trick Room, I'm guaranteed a knockout onto that slot no matter what anyway. And if you go for an Earthquake, my Snorlax is going to survive it, so I don't feel like it'd be too bad. The question is if my opponent has a Snorlax in the back, that could actually be a little bit troublesome. So maybe I should have Recycled there. I was thinking about going for Recycle, but I wasn't too sure about my play there, but I think Recycle might have been better. Uh, no ally switch this time, so I will be able to get return. I'm guessing maybe Cresselli reverses the Trick Room here. I feel like that's what you would do here. No, you're just gonna fire for Psychic into the Snorlax. Okay, Snorlax is gonna be able to take that. Gets a Spadef drop, not too bad though. Snorlax should be coming out from my opponent's side of the field. Or Incineroar, actually, huh? Not the Pokemon I expected to come out, but I'll definitely uh, take that situation. The problem is there's an ally switch that could come out from this Cresselia. Also, we don't know what kind of Cresselia this is. We only know it's not Berry. It was in Berry range earlier. Is it worth just to go for the Tectonic Rage here? It might be worth just to go for the Tectonic Rage here because you have to double up my Landis if you want to knock it out. I think I'll just protect Snorlax here and go for a Tectonic Rage attempt. You have to flare up its Ice Beam, my Landers, which is a very situational, situational play. So, I think I'm going to come out into my Snorlax. You are worried about my Snorlax. And it looks like a Reverse Trick Room. Okay. I was just about to say, are you going to go for the Shadow Psyche? But my Landers does go first. So, that does confirm that I, my Z-Move will be going off first. And it will be the Ground Neem Z. So, I will be able to get my Tectonic Rage off. And I'll be able to knock out the Incineroar. So, two Pokemon down. And I wonder who the last Pokemon is. I'm not sure if you bring Venusaur against my team because Venusaur is a really poor matchup against my team. So I am able to knock out the Incineroar, which is really nice. And we'll find out what that last Pokemon is. Trick Room is going to be reversed from the Cresselia. There was one more turn after it, but now let's see what my opponent's going to bring out for the last Pokemon. Is it going to be Snorlax? Porygon 2. Special attack rise, which isn't a big deal. Uh, the question is, do I want to save Snorlax? Because I could realistically save Snorlax. I could save Snorlax for later. I think Mimikyu is actually pretty worthless in this game. Yeah, I think I, I'm going to sack my Mimikyu here. Because I think Snorlax still has value because I could always rock to the Porygon too. So my Snorlax can be faster than the Porygon too. And just recycle with my Snorlax and then get my Belly Drum up eventually. So, sack Mimikyu here as we will get a U-turn off. Does this knock out Cresselia after the Intimidate? Doesn't. Wow, that's a bull Cresselia. Oh, it was Barry. We were just short of proccing it, I guess. Okay. Does reveal it's Weaky Barry. We will... Uh, retreat here. Uh, go on to my Charizard, I guess, because I don't think you're gonna throw off Thunderbolt. If anything, you're gonna go for like an Ice Beam or Psychic. Psychic gonna come out into the Snorlax slot. Just gonna knock out my Mimikyu. 
And an Ice Beam does come out of my Charizard. I just hope for... Good, I didn't jinx it. No freeze. We'll go out of my Landris here, and I think we'll just click Heat Wave and U-Turn. Yeah, I'll just click Heat Wave and U-Turn into Cresselia. I do want to knock out the Cresselia here, if possible. So I'll just draw off a Heat Wave and a U-Turn to Cresselia. That Cresselia is really physically bulky. I'm going to Heat Wave and U-Turn because it will should be able to knock out Cresselia unless there is the Ally Switch play. But is Ally Switch your play here? I'm just not sure if you would Ally Switch here. And I think Snorlax will actually be able to live one... Uh, Ice Beam slash Thunderbolt from the Porygon 2. So I think I'm in an okay spot as... Let's see what my opponent decides to go for. The Ally Switch play, maybe a Thunderbolt and a Charizard could be the worst possible situation here. As there's no Ally Switch and I do connect with my Heatwave, so I should be able to knock out the Cresselia. Yeah, I get the burn, but I don't think it matters because of the fact that I did double up the Cresselia slot. Yeah, I do knock out Cresselia, that's good. Critical hit, I don't think it matters. My last U-turn was Intimidated, so that's why I did little damage. I think U-turn would have done it enough. And now I can bring up my Snorlax. Yeah, this should be good. I should be able to win because Recycle should be enough. Thunderbolt gonna come out of Charizard, that's fine. And a Rock Tomb to Porygon. Cause I just need Snorlax to get one Recycle off guaranteed. I'm not sure if Snorlax would live the Ice Beam Thunderbolt right now. So I think just going for the Rock Tomb is the safest play. Because I don't think, unless you really expect a Rock Tomb, which one I didn't reveal yet. Uh, I don't think there's a reason not to. And I don't know if you're going to target down my Snorlax or not. But I feel like you should. You could target down my Landers or my Snorlax. I feel like no matter what, Snorlax can win this game if I just am able to get the one speed advantage against this Porygon. So I just need one Recycle off. We will Protect. Tomb. Let's connect, so we'll get the speed drop on Porygon 2, and that should allow me to be faster with Snorlax, as we will see the Ice Beam come out. Does hard down my Lander slot, good play from my opponent, but again, I don't really mind that because now I can recycle with my Snorlax. Uh, critical hit, I don't think it matters, it's plus one special attack. So yeah, just click that recycle button over and over until I'm able to get enough HP for a Belly Drum. The only thing I'm worrying about is like if I get, you know, some unlucky things with like, you know, maybe like a Thunderbolt Para or some other stuff. It does confirm that I am faster. We'll be able to get my Manga Berry. And yes, this is a slow way to play this game, but this is definitely the way that I have the best shot of winning. So, Ice Beam gonna come out. Actually, I would have survived the Ice Beam uh, regardless. So, I'll recycle twice. And then I'll Belly Drum. Yeah, that's definitely the play. My opponent is in belly drum range because my opponent hasn't gone for it. Ice Beam gonna come out once again. And this is the slow way of playing the Snorlax, but it is it is just the way I guarantee the game without like, you know, a major amount of luck going out of my way. Cause I could have brute forced my way through this game earlier, but I feel like just playing the slow, simple game with Snorlax is the way to go here. I could realistically belly drum right here, but I feel like it's, you know, a little bit risky if my opponent goes for the Thunderbolt and gets the Para. Which I'm actually really surprised my opponent's going for the Ice Beam because uh, you can't freeze in Sun. So, Sun does fade here, so I guess it's the moment of truth of whether you do it or not. But I will belly drum up, so I'll live three Ice Beam slash Thunderbolts, but it really comes down to secondary effects right here. If there are no secondary effects, I just win the game. If not, it's gonna come down to does my opponent get the secondary effect? And, you know, I'm really hoping it doesn't. Ice Beam gonna come out. Snorlax! Okay, it looks like Snorlax is not gonna make this any more dramatic than it had to be. We will go for the return into Porygon. Nice. That was a good by Porygon, and that is good game. So, playing the slow game with Snorlax did end up working. And yeah, just able to pick up a win. As I said, Snorlax was really good against my opponent's team. I didn't think my opponent was really going to bring Venusaur in that game. The Swampert was just, you know, a really interesting Pokemon though. I, I'm i actually really surprised that there was um, a Mega Swampert without rain. Because usually you only see Mega Swampert with rain, for instance. But yeah, that just really caught me off guard. And the fact that 
Yeah, no Snorlax too. I'm actually very surprised my opponent didn't bring the Snorlax because I thought Snorlax was definitely a Pokemon my opponent was going to bring. But luckily my opponent decided not to bring it, so was able to just brute force my way. And I think I'm actually going to play one more game because, I don't know, I feel like the last episode was short. So I think I'll play one more game. So we'll be right back with the third game of today's episode. All right, we got Weatherman from the United States who I played earlier and it was actually, I think, one of the blissy losses that I had, but it looks like my opponent switched teams. We got a Tyranitar, Incineroar, Cresselia, Tapu Koko, Amoongus, and Azumaro. So, looks a little more like a standard team. Okay. I, I'm really glad. <laughs> I'm really glad. Um, what do I want to do here? I like... I like Charizard Landis as a lead. Does, like, Landis just threatens my opponent so much in this matchup. Um, Mimilax isn't that great here, I feel like. I don't think it's that great. Although, if it is... No, it shouldn't be called my Cresselia. If you have Tyranitar, especially if it's a Mega Tyranitar, you should not have called my Cresselia. So, I'll eliminate the call my Cresselia possibility, because I really don't expect it. It'd have really poor synergy otherwise. Uh, Lele is definitely useful. It helps shut down the Azumarill as well as it's pretty good just to hit my opponent's side of the field. Sometimes I wish I carry Focus Blast on the Lele over Shadow Ball because Focus Blast could be a lot more useful for like Tyranitar and stuff. Or maybe HP Fighting because as a spraying HP Fighting against Tyranitar, but then again I can Moon Blast anyway so I guess it doesn't make a difference. Uh, and I'm pretty sure Moon Blast would be stronger because of Stab. I will lead Charizard Landers I think. It's just strong as a lead. Exogre top of in the back. Uh, Snorlax could have been useful, but I feel like just having the Excelgore in the back can be useful because it's a nice pressure tool, as always. So let's see what my opponent's going to bring out. I don't think Mimikyu was that good in this matchup. I could have seen myself bring Snorlax, but I'm not exactly too sure if I liked it. Uh, what are we going to see? Potentially the Cineroar and Cresselia lead. Okay. So, that's interesting to note. Uh, does my opponent have any ground enemies other than the Cresselli? I do not believe so. Amoongus, Azumarill, Tyranitar, Tapu Koko. Um, what was the last one? And then it's Incineroar, right? No, I said all of them. Okay, yeah. Um, Pretty decent start for me. I would say it's a pretty decent start. I don't know what my opponent's gonna go for. Yet. Hmm. I could protect, double protect. I feel like just going for a heat wave isn't too bad here with my Charizard and just just drawing off a heat wave from protecting my Landis because I definitely don't want to take like an Icy Wind. I could accept Trick Room, but I definitely don't want to take an Icy Wind. So, fake out going to come out, does target down my Charizard, so good play from my opponent. A good Tectonic Rage right there, as it's just an Icy Wind, okay. So, I'm not really too upset about that, because, you know, Charizard taking damage isn't too bad. It's not really going to do too much in the long run. So, I guess the question is, how good is my positioning against Tyranitar later in the game? Hmm. So I gotta think about positioning against Tyranitar, so I could take the knockout on Incineroar because nothing on my opponent's team really likes switching to Tectonic Rage plus Heat Wave. I don't think anything on my opponent's team does like taking that. I could U-turn out, but the problem is if I U-turn out, Incineroar is just such a big threat later in the game. I think it's just better to Tectonic Rage here and just draw off a Heat Wave. Yeah, I will go for that play. Uh, hopefully it's just not Ally Switch. I'm really hoping. Because <laughs> that's the one thing I'm just like... <sighs> it would be uh, frustrating because if it's ally switch, are you really going to go for ally switch right here, right now? You're not. So Tectonic Rage will go off in Incineroar and that should be a knockout onto the Incineroar slot. So at least I'm able to get rid of the Incineroar, big uh, threat to my Lele and Excelgore. But the problem is how do I handle the rest of my opponent's team because it's not looking too good to handle the Cresselia. But a, long, a big heat wave is going to come out. That's going to do about 50%, but I don't feel like I can really tell you as much. I knock out the Incineroar here. Again, Mega Tyranitar just seems like such a big problem here. Heat wave does connect. I'm still faster than a Crusader, that's good to note. And Calm Minds. Is it actually Calm Mind Moonlight on a team of Mega Tyranitar, or is it just a Crusader with Calm Mind? Like, I'm really curious. 
I don't really mind the Cresselia going for Calm Mind though, because of the fact it's just not going to do too much. Tapu is going to come out. Is that Electric Seed? Don't tell me this is actually an Electric Seed Calm Mind Top uh, Calm Mind Cresselia on this kind of team. It actually is. That's crazy, dude. That is crazy. Um, I do have Encore, so I'm not really too worried about the Cresselia. My Landis was Intimidate, so I can't knock out the top of Coco. I think, if anything, I want to U-turn to Cresselia and just protect my uh, Charizard here. Charizard doesn't seem too useful. Unless it's a Mungus in back. Tapu Koko going to protect, that's fine. I'm pretty sure that's just Icy Wind coming out, which is okay for me. Because I'll get a bit of momentum here by going out into my... I think I can just go out into my Tapu Lele. As he turn does nothing, which is okay. So I can threaten a lot of damage to Tapu Koko. The question is, do I want to go my Excelgore here? Although Icy Wind would prevent it from doing too much work. So I think I am going to go my top of the ladder here. Yeah, I'll go my top of the ladder here. And let's see what the Cresselia is going to go for. Just an icy wind, okay. Now the question is, would you actually Gigavolt Havoc my uh, Charizard? Because that's the only way you can knock out my Charizard. Unless you're Life Orb and you go for Thunderbolt. I feel like Top of Coco might decide to go for Volt Switch here. Uh, Moonblast plus Overheat should be able to knock out the Cresselia at this range. Actually, is Sun still up? Yeah, Sunlight's still up. I don't know why. I think there's something wrong with my eyes, or it's just not displaying because of the Psychic Terrain. But I think uh, I could go for a Moonblast plus Overheat into the Cresselia and pick up a knockout. We're going to see Top of Coco switch out, reveal the last Pokemon. It will be that Azumarill, actually. Okay. This game got really interesting. So I'll fire off a Moonblast and Overheat, and as long as I connect Overheat, I should just be able to knock out the Cresselia, which is really good. So... You know, overheat. Let's connect with the Cresselia. And the little way actually heat would have been able to knock out the Cresselia, but I just wanted to be sure I would get the knockout on the Cresselia. So, Calm Mind, Electric Seed, Moonlight, Cresselia on a Mega Tyranitar team? I'm not too sure about that. We do get rid of the Tyranitar, which is pretty good. We will see Tapu Koko come out. I do need to keep Lele because Lele will be able to win the game. So, I don't care if you funded with my Tapu Koko, I'm not letting you get the damage off into my Tapu Lele. So, I'm actually going to throw off a Landis right here, and I think I'm just going to go for the Overheat into the Tapu Koko slot. Yeah, this is fine. So, I'll go Landis right here. Throw off this Intimidate into the Tapu Koko. And we're gonna see a Gigavolt. I don't know. This should, I'm, I don't know. I feel like if you're gonna knock out my Charizard, you're gonna go for the target into my. Uh, I feel like it would Thunderbolt my Charizard slot, if anything. So Gigavolt into Lele? Yeah, it does go into my Lele slot. Overheat will come out. Even though I'm minus two in the sun, I should still be able to knock out the top of Coco. Or at least a big amount of damage. Yeah, that's a good amount of damage. Gleam Ring. Belly Drum, which is fine. I do have my Excel Gore and my Top of Lele in the back. I'm not really too concerned about that. You can go for Aqua Jet for all I care. I don't think that's gonna help my opponent much. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll sack my, both my Pokemon here. I really don't need them. I'll go for Earthquake and Heat Wave here. The reason is, is if I if, even if my opponent gets a double knockout, I get a free switch in Excel or Lele, and I could Encore the Azumarill into Belly Drum because it can't do anything in the Psychic Terrain. So yeah, you could go for Aqua Jet all you want, pal. It's not really gonna help you as much. Thunderbolt gonna come out too. That's fine. So Charizard's going to go down, but the important part is I do get the free switch in to my Excel Gore and my Top of Lele. Five turns to Psychic Terrain. I have the ability to Encore the Azumarill because, yeah, just Encore the Azumarill. So Aqua Jet in Psychic Terrain will fail because both my Pokemon are grounded on the floor. And then I'll just Psychic to Top of Coco because it's the only Pokemon that can currently move right now. So, yeah, my opponent doesn't really have many options right here. I could even find- there are so many plays I can make. I could actually just Final Gambit the Azumarill because it is in Final Gambit range. But uh, I'll just Encore and Psychic. I mean, there are a bunch of plays that I can make in order to win this game. I'll just Encore here. There's honestly like- there are so many plays. Even now I could actually just go for like uh, Acid Spray, 
onto top of Coco and a Psychic, because I'm pretty sure Psychic would knock out Azumarill, unless it's like some kind of really weird Spadef spread. Uh, Psychic will come out on top of Coco, will be able to knock out top of Coco. Let me just know, that's a shiny top of Coco. That means it's confirmed to be timid, but. <laughs> and also, I really do love how shiny top of Coco looks. Oh, it's not prior. It doesn't count as priority on that turn because my opponent went for play rough. Oh, that's a pretty cool thing. <laughs> Have you ever seen that someone get Aqua Jet in terrain? Oh, that's actually really funny, dude. That's actually a busted thumbnail. That's definitely being the thumbnail. But you can't Aqua Jet in the terrain. You're locked into Encore, so yeah. It doesn't actually count. So if you don't know what happened, the Azuma went for, I think, either play rough, knockoff, or return, whatever its other move is. I encore it, so the move didn't actually have priority. So when the move switched over because it was forced to use Aqua Jet, it actually didn't have a priority that turn. So actually, my opponent's on the Lele. That could have been game over. Huh. Yeah, my opponent's on the Lele. That could have been game over real quick. So I think if I were to make a play again, I should have final gambited. Yeah, <laughs> but that was interesting, wasn't it? But thank you all for tuning in today's episode of VGC 2018 Back to Back Battles. If you did like it, please leave a like down below. Show the support. As well as you can check out the rest of my stuff down below in the description. So as my social medias, the sides here of my channel, all that good stuff will be linked down below. As well as the comment section down below if you want to know, you know, I might leave a message a day before I'm streaming saying that I'm going to be streaming the next day. So if you, uh, if you do want to... Follow me on my Twitch channel, stuff down below, including my Twitter and all that good stuff. Previous episode of VTC 2018 Back Battles down below as well. Leave a like on the video to show your support as well as feel free to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Have a great day, people. And until we battle again, I'll catch y'all later.